Okay, so let's talk about um, another um, tool inside these swarms, which is called response validation. And so what that means is when you have um, a short answer um, option open, you can click on these three dots and you can see response validation. So remember, depending on the type of question, you might see those options change. So on my multiple choice, I see that shuffle option order. Um, and a couple different things, but in my short answer, let's go back there. I have on my three dots, I have response validation. So the point of response validation is to verify that you get the right results, the content you're looking for in the survey. So nothing's worse than giving out a survey to a bunch of respondents, whether it's students, parents, colleagues, and receiving the data back, and a few of them have filled out the form wrong, essentially is what happens. So response validation kind of helps you collect the correct information. So for an example here, I have email put in. If I go and ask for response validation, I can tell my form in this particular question, it's going to be text. And I can do text that contains some sort of language, um, doesn't contain something. I can just say email address. And then this form will know if they're putting in an appropriate email address or not before it lets them continue on, possibly a URL. And that will validate that I'm getting the correct response. So for example, if I want to say text um, that contains, and this is just an example. So again, it has to, you know, whatever you're doing your form for. If I was collecting student emails, which I probably wouldn't, I would just put my form on collect, um, automatically collect emails. But let's say I wanted them to put this information in. It was a particular form um, that you needed that data for. When the respondent goes to fill this out, so I'll go in like I'm the respondent on this email question. And if I put in my COUSD.net, the response says must contain studentmail.org. So that lets me know right away I've put in the wrong information and it helps you collect the correct information that you actually want. So um, in a form, in a survey where I say, what is your... Um, post high school email address, maybe for seniors exiting, um, and you want something that does not contain at student mail, and that would force them to put in their personal Gmail or whatever account they have. If I just put it on email, um, then it would know, it would validate if it was actually a correct email address. But notice it did say your account needs to include at studentmail.com. So, um, if you don't put anything in the custom error text, it'll put whatever you put here. So again, I had an at student mail, sorry, dot org. And so when I entered it wrong, the form automatically said in red letters, it must contain at student mail dot org. If you want to have a different message, then you need to write it in this box. So I could write my own that says, please use your student mail account or whatever to kind of veer them in the correct direction. Other ways you can validate responses. If you're asking them to put in a number, maybe it's a phone number, maybe it's a student number, and you want to make sure they have, um, they're using the appropriate data. Um, you have a lot of different ways to quantify the number being entered. Um, the length. So maybe it's you're going to ask them for their student ID, and you want to say there should only be five numbers in that. And my custom error text might say, it should only be five numbers. So if they enter something different, they'll be prompted to put in the correct information. So this is just a data collection um, addition. Okay, regular expression is a little bit more detailed. Um, so um, we'll go over that um, in a different video. But um, that's kind of point number one with data validation is if you need it to kind of verify or make sure that you're collecting the right information. Another way you can use data validation is to require a correct answer. And this has a little bit more of a connection to the ability to create escape rooms using your Google Forms, which is in our next video um, in the advanced series. Um, but just so we can show it here, I might want to set up a password, perhaps on my survey where I quantify all of my demographic data, first name, last name, maybe email, maybe class period, whatever all that main stuff is. And then I'm gonna put a password in. 
So nobody can get through to my test or my assessment or my survey until I give them the password. But it allows my respondents, when they come into the class, I might be able to say, go ahead and open the sample survey, start filling it out. When you get to the pass password, hang tight. I'll give you the password shortly just to get everyone ready and going. So I might say here, response validation. The text contains, let's say, chargers. If I don't write custom error text, if they type in the wrong thing, you have to remember it's going to say in red, text must contain charger. So it's actually going to give them the password. So you need to put something here if you don't want your respondents to know the answer. In other words, I want them to see try again, because if I don't put that in there, I'll go ahead and take this like that. Let's go to that password feature and show you what that looks like. If I put in cat and try to go to the next thing. It says must contain chargers. So now I just gave them the answer. And that was supposed to be a password and it would be released when I wanted to give them the password. Uh, so make sure you put in custom error text or the computer will automatically tell them what it is if that's how you're using it uh, for some sort of password. So, or to, um, you can actually quantify answer. So if you want them to have a particular answer, so let's say this is a math question, and you wanted the answer to be exactly 20 before it grades it. You can actually make sure that that answer is 20. And I can say, you know, the correct answer here, just like we've done before. It's a way that you can do that and, and validate to get the exact same answer. This is one way. And if they don't get it wrong, you could give them a try again. The data validation will always allow them to try again. So if you don't want to do that with like a test question, like an assessment question, you want to stay in your assessments and not use data validation. Perhaps I'm going to use this. I want this to be graded automatically, but it's a short answer. What animal was the main character? And my answer, let's say, I'm going to tag this as the correct answer is cat but I'm also gonna write cat, and just in case, all caps. So all other answers are incorrect. Okay, so that way, depending, it is case sensitive. So sometimes you actually, in a description, if you wanna do a short answer like that, you might wanna say, use all lowercase letters, and then I just added those to the answer key, just in case. So if that's the case, then you have this and you also have your answer feedback again. So you have some feedback there you can put in. So if I go and um, try to take this quiz question, we'll go ahead and go to that main character question so you can see what that looks like. So again, we'll just kind of have any of those validations on. So I'm just going to kind of skip through so we can get to it. If I say dog and go, nothing's going to happen. See, it won't give me an answer. But when I ask the quiz to be automatically graded, it will grade based on the answer key I put in there. So that's a little bit different. So um, oftentimes we get confused between should I use data validation on my quiz because I have short answers. At this point, it's probably better you stick with the short answers and use the different versions of the answer that could possibly show up. and for sure, always give a description that might help them out. Use all lowercase letters, um, some sort of prompt that might help them. So that's sticking with your short answer options on your quizzes. Da data validation is when you're looking for an exact answer, possibly a password like we said, or you're just making sure that the content that your respondents are putting in match something that has to do with what you're looking for. And if they don't do it, it will give them a little flag to say, hey, it's supposed to be something else. So that's actually helpful, again, depending on the content you're putting in there.